amendment bill. When we do that, I would like all of you colleagues to play, to, to, to pay close attention to the context of the legal opinion before us. You will recall that when we met earlier this year, on the 11th of February to discuss the NEMLA bill, which was returned to our committee from the NCOP. Some of you colleagues and myself, we asked the question whether the NEMLA bill needed to be subjected to further public hearings. And then we were advised against this decision and we went on to adopt the report of the bill which was passed by the House, in particular the National Assembly, and post that the president eventually signed the bill into law. Then that recent NEMLA Act has now become a matter of litigation between parliament and public stakeholders. The DG and Chileka will attest how we ran around the other weekend trying to to sign and then I want to appreciate you minister and the, and the DG for the support that you granted us that we make sure that uh, we would then uh, commission the proper affidavit. And then the point that I'm raising now that is that that NEMLA Act now has become a matter of litigation between parliament and some public stakeholders who felt that this NEMLA bill it was supposed to have been subjected to further public hearings because substantive changes had been effected to the bill. And then the other issue that I wanted to raise this morning, if we had the judgment on that NEMLA Bill Act, the decision on the National Field and Forest Fire Amendment Bill will have been easier or straightforward. But thus far, because the matter is before the courts, we don't have. So I would like us to be alive to the reality of public participation. And when we do that, we need to interrogate any gray area so that our decision can withstand the test of fairness. The lawyers call it also reasonableness minister. For example, where I'm seated, I'm looking at section four and five under the briefing note of the legal opinion. And then felt fire seems to affect almost all our rural population, many of whom might not have radio sets or the ability to read, also including the ability to afford newspapers. That's the harshest reality of our country. Then, then the issue that comes in mind is how can a call for written submission or targeted request for inputs from the uh, from the, 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 the or targeted inputs from the community assist such categories of people who have nothing, no access to newspaper, no access to radio in that particular way, no access to social media. So then the issue that comes to the picture is whether grassroots advocacy group also cannot challenge such approach in the court of law. And then the other issue that we also need to consider is whether the NCOP process downstream can be considered public participation. And if not, then the question will be why. It's high time now for us uh, as these uh, members of the NA so that we, we then sponsor something like these rules uh, of the National Assembly to also then define what constitutes adequate or sufficient public participation to provide certainty to committees. And then as we'll be doing that, colleagues will further then continue with the responses by the department uh, on the issues raised during the submissions on public hearings on the National Field Fire Amendment Bill. And then, you know, DG, let me say this upfront, as and when 
you present because I see your presentation it's so long. Only focus <laughs> on that on those issues that were not covered the previous time. And then once we do that after consideration of the responses, we are also going to consider and adopt a consolidated report of the provincial public hearings on the national field and Fund fire forest bill. And then as we do that as well, we're going in between to get a presentation by the Working on Fire program that's then implementing agency of the department. They requested for a hearing, but then, the, then we, we, we granted them that opportunity. Then we'll hear from them. And if that the issues that the department want to respond to that, mindful of the fact that this matter is before the courts. So we need to refrain to dealing with the merits of the court, of the, the processes, but we'll hear what is the issues. And then when the department feels these matters are the matters that are subject to care, then we'll allow them not to deal with those issues. So basically this is how we are going to proceed. I, we want to welcome all of you back again. I hope you are so refreshed. There's a lot of things that colleagues you learn there while you are in Egypt that you can then utilize in continuing to exercise your oversight role as we progress on dealing with these matters. Then thank you, Minister, with your team for representing the country so well. And everybody I could see wanted to hear how South Africa is doing it. It's a sign that we are on a step, on the right direction. Let's keep on doing what we need to do. Having said that, let me welcome um, Ms. F. Ibrahim to deal with item two on the agenda, that is the briefing by the parliamentary legal advisor on the process to be followed to extend, to extend clauses on the National Field and Forest Fire Amendment Bill. Over to you, uh, Ms. Ibrahim. Thank you, Sorry. good morning. Sorry, Chairperson. Yes. Sorry, to, if, if you would allow me to just make one comment or reference uh, on your opening address. Um, Chair, it's, it's, uh, it's just with regards to um, the issue raised around NEMLA. Um, I am very pleased that our committee took the time um, under your leadership um, to interrogate um, that legislation and uh, all of the points that we've raised uh, in terms of our concerns um, have been minuted um, in the, the record of that meeting. Um, but uh, obviously we, we had to take advice uh, from the officials present during that meeting, which we have done. And um, I am just pleased uh, that um, our committee uh, and all members applied their minds adequately and properly interrogated um, the decision around uh, our position um, on that. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you so much for that affirmation, uh, Honorable Brent. And I should think, Chileka, you can share the copy of my affidavit with the colleagues. It precisely addresses the issues that you are raising, Honorable Brent. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Ibrahim, are you ready? Or is there any other person who wants to comment on the issues that I've raised in relation to the NEMLA bill? Minister, we are in a meeting. You can also say something if you want to. Uh, th thank you, Chino. I, I don't have anything to say at this stage. Okay, thank you. Let's proceed with the Presentation on the legal advice. Uh, good morning, Chair, and good morning to the honorable members, uh, the minister, the deputy minister, and our colleagues from the department. Uh, Chair, our office was asked 
to provide advice on what the procedure uh, would be if the committee wished to extend the subject uh, matter of the bill or to amend further clauses um, in the National Felt and Forest Fire Amendment Bill. I had a look at some of the uh, proposed changes, Chair, and they relate in fact to just amendments of um, further clauses and not necessarily an extension in the subject matter um, of the bill. Uh, Chair, in a rule 2864C, specifically states that if a bill amends provisions of legislation, it must, if it intends to propose amendments to other provisions of that legislation, seek the permission of the assembly to do so. Um, and then in terms of public participation, as um, Chair, you've already pointed out, there is a constitutional duty on parliament to facilitate uh, public participation when executing our legislative processes. And uh, the courts have been very clear in that regard. I'm not going to go into detail on the case law, but members will be aware of the Doctors uh, for Life case, which is a seminal case that sets out the importance of that public participation process um, in, in the lawmaking uh, process. Chair, in terms of this particular um, bill, the process that would need to be followed would firstly, we, the committee would need to adopt a provisional report on the bill and seek the permission of the House to then extend uh, the provisions of the bill as it wishes to do. And this uh, report should include a description of what those additional provisions are that the committee wishes to consider, and then a request that the Assembly grant such a uh, provision. And that gets tabled in the ordinary manner as any other report does um, before the NA. If that is uh, adopted and approved, Chair, the, uh, the committee can then um, move on to a process of public participation. Um, public participation would be necessary, Chair, in as far as new amendments are now being sought. Uh, the, the law is not um, clear on what the nature and form of public participation must be that it leaves up to Parliament um, and there are various factors that the committee would have to consider in determining uh, what would be an appropriate uh, type of public participation uh, for this bill. So the things that you could look at by way of example would be the nature and extent of any of the new proposed clauses and the intensity of the impact on, on those clauses on the public the effect um, of the proposed clauses on the bill as already canvassed with the public. So in other words, uh, do the proposed changes substantially uh, change the bill? Have they been dealt with um, in any measure in the public participation process that has already occurred? I know that some of the, um, some of what is being wanted uh, that the committee would like to change are things that have been canvassed to some extent. Uh, then things like practicalities, so time and expense over year, you would consider whether this is an urgent bill, is it necessary for the bill to be passed by a certain date, or do you have some latitude in terms of time? Um, and then also the cost of public participation, because we do know it's a costly affair. But Chair, that being said, the saving of time and money in and of itself uh, would not justify uh, inadequate opportunities for public participation, but it's certainly something that can be taken into consideration. Um, so, Chair, the, the bottom line is that the public participation process that the committee follows must be of such a nature that it would be meaningful and reasonable. Um, so it's not something that is done uh, just for a tick box um, exercise. And sometimes even a very small change that one would not think would require public participation because the nature of the change is, is so tiny itself in terms of drafting can actually have a very big impact. So by way of example, um, Parliament was taken to court on the South African, on, on, on the Medicines and Related Substances Act, and that was uh, by the South African Veterinary Association. Over there, Parliament added one word, which was veterinarians, to Section 22 of, um, of that Act, with the impact then that vets would need to apply for a special license in order to dispense medication. So even though it was just the addition of one word, the impact, as you can imagine, was, was quite huge on um, the affected persons being, being the vets in this case. Um, and the Constitutional Court 
um, they then said that we did not uh, follow public participation. Um, and of course, that then had to be redone. Um, so, Chair, once the committee decides on the specific changes um, it would like to make, uh, we then can give further advice on the format of this public participation. And of course, public participation can take um, various forms. Uh, it can be calls for written submissions, and those would be wide calls that are made um, that are made nationally. Uh, they could be um, radio advertisements, advertisements on uh, Parliament's um, social media pages, and so on. And then, if necessary, to also do um, auto submissions. Uh, if possible, all those uh, persons, are, I'm not sure to what extent the committee kept a record of persons who, uh, the details of the persons who attended the public participation processes in the various uh, provinces, but they should be sent um, these, uh, an invitation to comment on proposed changes. It would be fairly easy to send that invitation to organizations that may um, have commented. Uh, municipalities can be used to assist us uh, by putting up notices and so on. So there is quite a bit that needs to be done. My view, Chair, is, is that uh, we must own the side of caution and we must follow this public participation process. Um, often it's not easy to see immediately what um, an impact of a change would be. Uh, so certainly this is going to take time if the committee wishes now to make these additional changes. I don't think it's something that can obviously happen by the end of this year. Uh, we do advise that we don't do public participation towards the festive uh, season because uh, often people are away and not able to uh, adequately respond. Therefore, if we are going to embark on such a process, it should be done uh, mid-January and, and onwards. Uh, of course, all of this, Chair, would only happen once the Assembly grants the necessary permission. So that would be the first step uh, for the committee to do that. And of course, that report would require that the committee um, have some information on what sort of changes it would like to make. Thank you so much, Chair. Check the chair. Check the yes, chair. Thank you so much. My apologies. I was just changing the gadgets, the load shedding. Okay. Here we go. Colleagues, that's the presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, Chairperson. Colleagues? Yes, we can hear. Colleagues, we're talking alone. Yeah, we can hear you, Chairperson. We can hear you. 
My apologies. Uh, not saying you know is the name of the game. Just started now, but it's okay. Let's proceed then. Okay. I was trying to change the gadget from the iPad to the phone. Thank you so much. Then can I get a show of hands of colleagues who want to interact with the legal opinion? I see the hand of the GM. It's up. Uh, you can start this DM in the meantime. You're going to be followed by Honorable Brian in that order. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. And thanks also to the legal team from Parliament with regard to um, this opinion that you requested them to do for the portfolio committee. Chair, as much as we agree with everything that has been said, uh, but I just wanted to show the importance of us then uh, passing this bill, because I heard that uh, in their uh, briefing note, they say that it's not possible to complete the process this year, that is 2022. But we are worried because this bill, we need it like yesterday, Chair. I don't know how uh, it can be done that um, the information that uh, the portfolio committee feels that it's needed, whether it can be separated from what we currently have, as a, as, a, as, a, as a portfolio committee and also as, as department, because I'm just getting worried that um, our intention uh, was for to assist the portfolio committee to pass this bill before uh, the end of this financial year. I'm just worried if we can't pass it now and then we have to go through this long process as uh, advised by the legal opinion. I, I'm just worried. I don't know what is it that we can do. Maybe in the discussions with members of parliament, also with our legal people and yourself, Chair, we can see how best we can deal with this because really we, we need this bill as I'm talking to you now. And now listening to the legal opinion and the time that it might take before it gets passed by Parliament, it's, it's a little bit, uh, it makes me feel a, a little bit uneasy, Chair. But thank you very much for the opinion. I had an opportunity then of going through it yesterday night as you have sent it through. Thank you very much. And that's, that's uh, my view, Chair. Thank you very much. I relax, DM. You must just relax. <laughs> Honorable Brian. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and, and, and for that legal opinion as well. Uh, Chair, I, I want to share some of the sentiments of, um, of the Deputy Minister as well. Um, I think the committee has been through an extensive uh, round of public hearings visiting all nine provinces. Um, and as mentioned, you know, at at an expense, um, the the cost of of transporting officials uh, and members of parliament, accommodation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and my only concern would be us then embarking on another process um, and the potential um, uh, costs then that would need to be um, incurred. Uh, especially taking into consideration the fact that we, you know, we have been to all nine provinces. That said, I know there were some concerns raised um, from some communities saying, you know, we needed you to come to a particular part of the province because it was difficult for us to get to the public hearings in in, in the other area. Um, but perhaps um, I think, as sort of alluded to uh, by the deputy minister. Perhaps uh, if there is a specific area that requires, um, uh, uh, you know, further public participation, that and 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 it's very urgent, um, that we could potentially look at at a similar process to what we are currently doing with the um, with the climate change uh, uh, hearings and set up a, a virtual uh, uh, hearing, um, and it need not be. Uh, something that uh, precludes uh, other members of the community who don't have access to that technology. Uh, yeah. One could set something up, uh, you know, with with a Zoom, where people would be able to participate. You know, in in the case of utmost, you know, uh, um, urgency. But uh, I do also agree that you know this is an important piece of of legislation. Um, there have been quite significant. Um, attempts made and and quite successful uh, public participation processes with those public hearings, and I would just be concerned about us getting 
to a point next year in the run up to the elections where certain things start to end up on the back burner and perhaps we don't prioritize the legislation, um, especially taking into consideration the impacts of climate change that are coming down the road. Thank you, Chair. I'm interested to hear what my other colleagues um, have to say. Thanks. Thank you, Honorable Bryant. Uh, I don't see any hand from the colleagues, but I should think from my side, I think we've done what was required on our part to hold public uh, participation. And like I've said earlier, as I thanked you when we closed up the public participation in the Western Cape. It was an intense one, driving at some point long distances, waking up early hours in the morning, and none of you ever dismayed. And I should think then under the circumstances, we'll just have to deal with the amendments as they are, if there are other, any other new things that uh, can come in line with the legal opinion, we can see if that cannot be done uh, through a, what do you call those things that you do, Minister, to give effect to the regulations or whatever, yes, to talk to certain issues because whatever was also raised, it was just to expand in relation to the amendment. And then we agree with you, otherwise it will have been a futile uh, exercise. If we are saying now we finished the public participations, we are to now again reopen it again, then we'll never complete the project. So any other new proposed clauses, they will have to follow the new amendment processes. I think that's what Honorable Dave is also saying. So then if there are new written submissions at some particular time, then I think then the department or either ourselves as parliament will be able to deal with them as and when they come or it's, yeah, that's the issue. So I should think in the absence of oh, person, you are ended up. Honorable uh, person. Thank you very much, Chair. Chair, I, I, I just want to know if the bill can't be passed as it is and then any amendments, I, I, I could have missed that part be dealt with later because as the DM says, the bill is critical. We have serious problems in terms of felt and forest fires. Is there no chance that the bill can go through as it is and whatever amendments, how critical are those amendments to the operation of the bill? Okay. It's a question for clarity. Who's going to take it? I think it's the team at DOC. Sorry, at DFFE, please. Can you deal with that, uh, DG and the team? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm going to request uh, our head of uh, regulatory uh, and legal. Um, I know that the legal <coughs> expert, uh, Ms. Gallip, is also on the line, but she's not feeling well. I'm going to request Vanessa to just respond to that aspect. Uh, and we were going to also cover some of those aspects uh, in our in our presentation uh, in providing the other details that the committee requested. But let uh, let me allow uh, the DDG legal to to respond. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, DG. Over to the DDG Liga. Good morning, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, uh, Minister and DM. Um, uh, yes, we will deal with it as part of the presentation, Chair. 
Uh, however, Linda Gallup has indicated that she will respond. Uh, she um, is online. Uh, can I hand over to Linda quickly? Thank you, Chair. Okay. Can she then respond? Uh, thank you, Chair. I tried to put on my camera, but it's still very dark. Um, uh, uh, maybe I can respond this way. Um, the department, uh, 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 the amendments to what is there in the current bill, um, that can be accommodated according to the legal opinion. If, if there are comments that uh, warrant now amendments to whatever is there already in the bill and it changes wording, except if it now impacts uh, significantly different on people's rights than before, um, which from the amendments that we have assessed that is required from what is there in the bill already, um, not a challenge. Where it may be a challenge is where we received a lot of comments around um, uh, many of the provinces uh, commented on, for example, the fines are too low. And you will remember, uh, Chair, in the previous meeting, uh, you have requested that we then cross-refer maybe to other legislation and, and so forth. Now, those amendments will be new amendments because they haven't been in the bill pre previously. We can, uh, for example, align it with the fines that are currently um, within the NEMLA bill or not, not in the NIMLA bill, but in the National Environmental Laws Amendment Act, where you have fines of 10 million. So for um, category one offenses, you can have fines of 10 million, <coughs> 5 million for the first offense, 10 million for the second offense. Uh, a category two offenses, you can have an, a fine of 5 million and, and so forth. So there were a lot of comments on that. So if we accommodate that sort of comments, then it will be new uh, comments. Now, the department do not insist that those uh, type of uh, amendments be done around uh, in, in, in this round. Uh, one amendment specifically, which the department uh, would have uh, wanted to accommodate is the amendment where there was a suggestion around the amendment in uh, terms of section uh, 10.1b, where the, there was a request that the newspapers be removed from that, the reference to newspapers be, uh, be removed from that section. Uh, but even there, uh, the department will not insist, but that will be a new amendment. So even there, the department would not assist, insist that that amendment be made. So it depends on, based on the public comments received, because many of the comments will lead to new amendments um, that were not there before in the, uh, in the current bill. If those uh, comments are they not uh, accommodated, then of course there will be no need for, um, because there will be no new, uh, new amendments. The only amendments that will then be accommodated will be those amendments um, for which there are already amendments in the bill and there's only a change of wording required. Then no further public consultation will be required if, uh, if one year the, uh, um, if we uh, one apply the legal opinion of the state law advisor. So it will very much depend on, on which are the comment, uh, uh, which are the amendments that this committee will feel is very important uh, that we should do this um, time around and not uh, through a further amendment process in future. Uh, it cannot really be done through regulation. The, the, the Act doesn't enable that sort of regulations. Uh, most of the comments are on the text of the, uh, the Act, the existing Act, which they then wanted to be amended. Fair and clear. Linda? It's noted. I think in the absence of any other hands, you can release uh, Ms. Ibrahim and thank you 
for always being available whenever we want to to assist us and give us guidance. Thank you so much. And thank you, Chair. And Chair, I'll continue to work with the department to make as many of those changes as we possibly can. Thank you. Awesome. I like that one. Um, it's so encouraging. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Ab Ibrahim. Can we then deal with, because the minister had requested to be excused at 10.45. Uh, I want us to have a slight uh, amendment to our program to accommodate the minister before she leaves so that she can also be private to what is being shared with us. It's item four. Is the colleagues from the Working for Fire here? Yeah. Over well, here, I was going to welcome them when we deal with that item. Good morning, Chairman, Honorable Colleagues, Minister, and the DG. I'm actually uh, on my way to the airport. I was planning to link up uh, at, at the airport. Um, but uh, I can certainly deal with that and then go to the airport. Yes, we can hear you. Thank okay. you so much. Thanks. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, um, I think, first of all, I, I'm happy to say that uh, I don't think there's any matters sub judicate. Uh, our council, together with the council department, have mutually agreed to remove the item from the roll at the court, so there isn't a matter that's pending. My presentation here today is uh, essentially in response to a report, we saw that the committee had received the report and um, had some misgivings about the issue of transfer of vehicles to project management in working on fire. So we noted that and uh, our board indicated they would like to at least be able to have an opportunity to appraise the committee on this matter. So just by way of background, the Kishugu Group, which was formerly um, FFA, has been implementing the working of fire program since 2003 through three successive public tender processes, WP8082, 82, WP9191, and then the seven-year MOA. Initially, Kishugu purchased ex-military heavy-duty samples from its own resources for the first 11 years of the program. When we entered into the seven year MOA in April, 2014, which ran up till March, 2021, there was a provision for procuring a fleet of 342 vehicles, which Kishugu procured by a vehicle finance scheme with a local bank. And uh, obviously these are vehicles which uh, belong to uh, the government. And um, I would have liked to share it, but I see the sharing um, facility has been disabled um, by your, your team. So I'd have given an idea of the vehicles that we do. I don't think we're able to share, Chair. I don't know if the, the Portfolio Committee Secretary is able to un, allow me to share the document. Chilek, are you able to allow him to share the document? Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I just go through. So these are the vehicles that we, we're talking about, Chair. I don't know if you're able to see it. It is a strike unit, which we oh, have. Which... Wait, Mr. Abrams. Colleagues, can you see it? I can't see it on my screen. It's not it's, it's not sharing. Sure <clears throat> okay. Mr. Abrams, try to... 
Make sure that you share it. I'll do you understand? So. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I think the Uber connectivity is not the best. <laughs> oh, I see. Um, let's just see again. Does it show now? It's not showing. No. Okay, I'll abandon the Did you send the document to? We didn't no, it's see just the document. Slide, it's just one slide check. I will proceed. Yeah. I'll proceed nonetheless. In the event there are strike team units, there's uh, fire trucks, which are four by four purpose built vehicles, there are crew buses. There are also <clears throat> uh, light delivery buckets. Now, the point we would like to clarify is the seven-year MOA allowed for the transfer of ownership of the buckets after its useful life, in other words, afterwards, after five years, to the junior management who are the regional managers who have to visit our bases. 98% of these are former firefighters. So this was a, a, a necessary tool for them to get to do their work at the dispersed bases across the country. These buckies travel on average 3,300 kilometers per month, often over rugged terrain because they were also fitted with a bucky sucky, which is a water container and allowed them to participate in prescribed burns and firefighting also. So the management scheme was part of the seven year MOA and the details were stabled a number of times at the NRM WAF Exco, which the department chairs and governed the contract over that seven year period. When the seven year period came to an end in March, 2021, the department entered into a six month agreement, which ran from 6th of April till the 5th of October, 2021. And this agreement explicitly stated that the transfer of these vehicles to the eligible project manager was to be delayed. And I just quote you out of Schedule 10, which said, the service provider will ensure that management who participated in the private vehicle scheme in the previous seven year contract will postpone the transfer of these vehicles to the ownership for the duration of the six month agreement and avail these vehicles for the purpose of implementing the project. So our argument, Chair, is that this was a contractually agreed on process uh, and the transfer then, which took place after the six month agreement was something that we had agreed with the department and of course, obviously also agreed with the relevant staff. I should add, Chair, is that as we know with fleet management, when these manage were, managers were made aware and had available to them, the opportunity to own these vehicles after the five years had expired. They obviously, their care for the vehicles was necessarily much better than when you simply just drive around with a fleet vehicle. So our board was very concerned that in the public domain, the, the portfolio committee had come to understand that this was somehow irregular and not with the, the, the contractual uh, provisions for, for such a transfer or knowledge of the department. So I think that's a simple point that I think we felt in public space, we did want to correct you. And, and I'm open to any questions at this point in time. Okay, that's, that's been the basis of your request to be heard. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much. And once more, I'm so sorry to put you on the spot as you are traveling to the airport. Yes, colleagues, this is what the request was all about to put these facts before us. Is there anything that colleagues want to talk to? I think it was just a request for information and also, yeah, as a consequence of our interaction on the triple B R reports, but like it was that was a finding from the AG. That's how the department, because as and when we consider the annual reports, they have to 
inform us on the foundings and what are they doing? Is there any issue? I see the hand of Bryant. Honorable Bryant. Thanks, Chair. Chair, I just want to say thanks to Mr. Abrams for providing that clarification um, and for the you know proactive way that he's come back to us. Um, I see he's uh, playing carpool karaoke, uh, so we weren't able to get the uh, to get the the presentations, but um, perhaps those can be circulated at a later stage. Um, I think we did receive something from uh, from him anyway. But thanks very much for the clarity. Okay, Honorable Mbata. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I just want to, I didn't hear uh, the presenter. Uh, what did he say about the issue of um, these cars? Are they being, uh, does the, the employee, employees pay something? or they just get this car free of charge? Because if I need to get clarity there, because I think they must buy them at a certain price. Uh, Mr. Abrams, you have Thanks. a question for clarity? Thanks, Chairperson. Thanks, uh, on Vata. So the vehicles had, in, had gone through the five year of service within the program. In typical fleet management, that is the end of their useful life and would normally be replaced. As I said, they were doing at least on average 3,300 kilometers per, per month and often in the rugged uh, terrain. Um, however, on the transfer, the participants were required to pay the required tax uh, in terms of the um, tax regime, in terms of benefits uh, before they could uh, take over the ownership chain. So at, after five years and with all those kilometers, uh, it is normally deemed at the end of its useful life in terms of fleet management. And as per the contract, that's what we had tabled with the NRM that would be transferred to, to these employees they were required to cover all the tax payments in, in that regard. Mine, mine to you, Mr. Abrams, you know we operate in a very regulated environment. As the AG has to audit uh, the books of the department time and again. This information that you are providing to us, did you give this information to the AG? And then is there any reason why the AG did not accept it as far as you are concerned? Because definitely the program has to be audited and then the AG has to make a particular finding. It will be prudent for us to know from you whether you did give this information to the AG and according to your own uh, assessment, is there any reason why the AG did not accept it? Chair, the information around the vehicle management scheme has been with the department since its inception. As I said, it was part of the seven-year MOA, and we have records of it being duly tabled at the NRM WAF Exco. Um, I we fully understand and, and accept the role of the AGSA in terms of auditing. We're not sure what specific the the issue is with. Uh, the finding from the AGSA because what I provided now is certainly been with the, the department um, since the inception of this program. As I've indicated, when it came to the six month extension, the department in fact asked us to delay the transfer until the end of that six month agreement. So I think this between ourselves and department has been public knowledge. Uh, before Mbata comes to the picture, maybe I would like the DG to chip in this in relation to my question, because it seems as if that information, the way you are responding, uh, Mr. Abrams, was not given to the AG. DG, can you comment on this? Because that's very critical. Because 
the things that you gave us, as I've indicated earlier, it was as a consequence of the AG's finding. And then the AG wanted you to act. That's why at the end you had to present us with a post audit action plan that talks to the issue. And the way I understand Mr. Abrahams, he was in re responding to that presentation that you made to us. That's why I was asking him this question. This information that is being brought before us, was it given to the AG? I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I want you also, you to make the, Mr. Abraham understand how AG audit books and the issues. Did you? Thank you. Thank you very much, Jefferson, and thank you to uh, Mr. Abrams, uh, MD of Working on Fire, on uh, tabling uh, the matters to, to the portfolio committee. So, Chair, um, I am going to request that the DDG provides the details. I think uh, what uh, the MD has referred to as an MOA, which was for seven years, uh, which then came to an end on the 31st of, of uh, March, 2021. Yes, that is accurate. It was then uh, extended for six months, uh, um, given that there wasn't any service provider and the process was still ongoing in as far as the tendering process is concerned. And he correctly outlines the section 10 and the clause in the MOA. Uh, clause 2.2.1, that makes reference uh, to this uh, fleet uh, um, uh, vehicle scheme, uh, where therefore we agreed that that would have to be postponed uh, in terms of the transfer of the ownership. There is also clause um, uh, 5.2, of the six month MOA, and I think the DDG can be in a position to provide details, where it's specifically very clear in terms of the conditions under which uh, the disposal would have to be made. And it does make reference to say, this will happen uh, in that uh, MOA clause 5.2. It will happen after consultation with the department on completion and approval by the department of an asset disposal memorandum submitted by the service provider. Now, when the audit uh, carry out their regulatory audit, they then go through, if this is subjected to testing, they then have to receive evidence and then test those evidence. They were given documents which uh, uh, the MD is referring to in terms of minutes. They reviewed those minutes and uh, upon having a finalized, they concluded that in the minutes, it did not serve as uh, sufficient evidence. Uh, and it was not clear that department granted that approval um, uh, in as far as the, 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 the transfer is concerned. And therefore, the adherence, the compliance uh, to this uh, MOA in terms of clause 5.2, whereby there should have been an asset disposal memorandum submitted for approval could not necessarily uh, be obtained. And, 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 and uh, maybe the, um, and, and therefore the, the actual amount of about 18 million for 42 vehicles, that was transferred was declared irregular um, by the Auditor General. And, and these findings, uh, Honorable Chair and, and members, we have even communicated them uh, to the service provider, which is normally not uh, a situation, but we have made uh, the findings available in terms of the details uh, that would have come out of the uh, regulatory audit. Uh, that was actually uh, um, uh, done for the department in relation to this program. But with your permission, Chair, I would just request the DDG if there's any other details 
uh, over and above what I've highlighted that she may want to add. Uh, thank you, Chair. Fair enough. DDG additions. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Minister and the Minister and, and Committee Where members. Are you? Uh, <laughs> we can't see you. I'm just struck. Okay, yes. Uh, um, the DG has been very clear in her response, and she has indeed highlighted the agreements uh, or the arrangements between us and the service provider dating from the seven year agreement, the MOA that expired in 2021, and also the six months agreement. From my side, I just wanted to conf um, respond um, to the question that you raised earlier and confirm that all the documents, including the MOU, MOU, MOAs were, were submitted or provided um, to the AG in terms of the audit. But I do not have additions in terms of what the DG has highlighted. It's been very clear and it's in line with um, the agreements that are in place, but also just emphasizing that um, the disposal was not done without the express agreement from the department. Thank you, Chair. Your hand is up. Is it Thank you, no. <laughs> Thank you, Chair, because I think the, the DG and the DDG, they've, uh, they've put it clear because uh, these are assets of the, they fall under the department and they must be uh, registered on the assets uh, register. And when they are supposed to be disposed, the, um, asset uh, uh, team uh, where the finance uh, personnel must be part, they sit down and they estimate the, um, the value of those assets to be disposed before they get disposed. And they also decide on how those assets are going to be disposed. If they check the value, then those assets must be um, what do, we, what do you call it? They must be sold, but uh, they must be auctioned in order to generate the uh, 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 funds, revenue for the department. Because as far as um, uh, the, the, the presenter from the Working With Fire was presenting, I could pick up that there were shortcuts that were not uh, uh, adhered to. So these are the assets and they fall under assets register. And automatically, if the auditor general comes in and he checks and he doesn't find all proper procedures, then there's a query. He was supposed to tell us that uh, they, there was an assets management that set and discussed the, this issue and there were estimates on the, those cars to say how much are those cars, the value of those cars, at that moment and how they were going to be disposed by auction because he's only, he, he also doesn't give us the proper uh, amount that the, the employees are, are paying. He's just saying taxes and it can be, we, we don't know, we can't estimate. Of which I feel here, uh, the Auditor General was correct to, 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 to query this some, somehow the asset, uh, 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 because this, this cast must be a uh, reaching off, removed from the asset register according to the proper procedures of the department. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the PT, the AG office was supposed to be in this meeting. I got feedback from uh, Chileka that uh, they were also going to join at uh, 12, but I think they will be able to get this moving forward so that uh, the AG will then have to be called. Yeah, but the matter is raised by the AG because it's in line with uh, my questioning to say, was this info as being presented uh, by Mr. Abrams given to the AG? And then for us to know 
why the AG did not accept it to come to this particular finding. But having listened to the responses, uh, Mr. Abrams, is there any other thing that you want to say in response? Because I should think this matters or, or the issues that are raised by Honorable Mbata, though they were then catered for in that agreement as the DG was referring to it. Do you still have anything to say? Yes, thank you. Or you you're fine with the clarification that you've made on the matter? Does it lay the thank matter you. to rest? Yes, over to you. Thank you, Chair. I want to confirm what the DG has just reported, that it was brought to our attention that the AGSA had made this finding. Um, Chair, I'd, I'd like to clarify just for Honorable Mbata. The, I'm not just uh, somehow uh, not sharing the cost of what they paid. The actual tax varied, obviously, vehicle per vehicle in terms of kilometers and the state and the valuation. So it is one wasn't one price that people pay. I think what Onum Bata says is correct in terms of asset management. And there was indeed an asset management committee attended by the department and working on fire during the seven year contract. Moreover, the method and the entire scheme was tabled at the WAF Exco, uh, which governed the, the proceedings at that point in time. At no point was any uh, permission required for the disposal in this way, in that the scheme in its entirety was adopted and accepted uh, during the seven year contract. I think the DG and you know, here we come into both the interpretation. The six month was an extension of the, it was a new six month agreement. It's been argued by the towards a new six month agreement. The vehicle scheme was actually only in the seven year agreement. It came to an end in March. 2021, and it certainly was our interpretation that for the for the sake of continuity in the program, please delay the transfer of the vehicle to these people, the ownership. There wasn't anything in the clause that said subject to, you know, how we should do it. There was a vehicle management scheme tabled and adopted. But I gather, Chair, this will be an interpretation matter which we will have to deal with the, the AGSA because, you know, it also extends across two different contracts, even though there's a call for extending the, the transfer period. But I'm, I'm, I'm happy, Chair, for having been given the opportunity to air our perspective on the matter. Thank you so much for that. And then that disposes of of this item on the agenda. Thank you so much. We are going back to the program. Chileka, we are going back to the program. We have dealt with item two and item four. Then we are going, reverting back to, yeah, I didn't see any end, yes. We are reverting back to item three. DJ and Tim, are you ready? Yes, Chairperson, we are. We are ready uh, to take the committee through. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. Um, we, I'm going to be supported by DDG, uh, not other, on this item. Uh, we have been to the committee um, uh, in relation to responses uh, on how we are going to respond on uh, the public hearing uh, meetings that were held in all the provinces across the country and some of the contributions that were made. And uh, as the chair had noted uh, in the beginning of the meeting, it's a very detailed uh, presentation. And uh, I am going to request that the TDG covers aspects that were not necessarily elaborated. In our previous meeting, we made a presentation that was in a summarized form and the committee requested that we do cover details so that 
they can be uh, an appreciation that as a department, we have seriously considered all the contributions that were made in the uh, different provinces in relation to, to the hearing. Uh, without waste of time, uh, Chair and Honorable Members, I'm going to request uh, Didi Ginodada to take the uh, committee through and also uh, areas where we believe that as a department, these are aspects where we could uh, uh, um, consider those comments uh, in terms of making amendments uh, on an extension or an elaboration of existing clauses, uh, in exception of areas where then the comments are bringing in new uh, aspect altogether, which will then for require that the process be followed. I think the committee had uh, uh, agreed uh, or had deliberated on this matter in line with the parliamentary uh, uh, legal opinion. Uh, with your permission, Chair, I am going to request that uh, DDG Nodada takes the committee through uh, this uh, uh, detailed input that we have now provided. Thank you. Thank you, DG. Over to you, DDG Nodada. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair, and good morning to you and all the Honorable Members. Good morning to the Minister, the DM, DG, and the colleagues. Um, as the DG has indicated, um, we are going to just deal with the areas that um, we did not uh, elaborate on in the previous meeting. Um, just as a way of introduction, uh, Chair, if you may allow me, just to indicate that um, um, in terms of the outline of the document, um, honorable members will note that uh, from page nine to page nine, uh, 23, that's where we are dealing with the detailed um, uh, responses for free state and then 24 to 43 will be for Northern Cape, 44 to 65 will be for Mpumalanga, 66 to 92 for KwaZulu-Natal, 93 to 111 will be for Northwest, <clears throat> and then uh, 111 to 122 will be for Limpopo, 123 to 137 will be for Gauteng, 130 to 151 will be for the Eastern Cape, and then lastly from one. 52 to the end will be for the Western Cape. And also to just uh, mention that um, in addition to what uh, Linda responded to on the areas that uh, we, we have dealt with, which looks at uh, offenses, the communication in terms of section 10, and also issues related uh, to the fines. Um, the, there was a, a question that uh, related to the boundaries or to the fire breaks that are established along the international boundaries. Um, and we did indicate in the previous meeting that that matter is dealt with uh, within the FPA support strategy that we are busy uh, at dealing with. Uh, and incidentally today, the team is currently in George uh, having the fire working group where all the um, FPAs are represented and they are looking at the comments that they have made on that strategy to try and make sure that we give effect to section 7b of the principal act where we are trying to support uh, these FPAs uh, for them to be able to establish or create those uh, fire breaks. Um, in line with that, as a department, through the SADC uh, protocol on forestry, there is a responsibility that we collaborate with our neighboring countries in terms of uh, making sure that uh, there are um, integrated fire management uh, strategies that we have. And in that uh, front, we are currently uh, having discussions with uh, the neighboring countries in terms of uh, making sure that there are those MOUs that are signed between ourselves uh, to try and fast track or to augment um, the, the, the strategy. Uh, the strategy itself does uh, look at both financial and non-financial support where um, issues uh, related to establishment of FPAs, uh, management of FPAs, and also how do we support the FPAs in terms of uh, uh, training and tools, which would things that uh, we are, are considering on. 
Oh, and then uh, in terms of the non-financial support, we are also looking at issues related to awareness. Uh, there has been a lot of um, issues raised with regards to uh, what, how is the department uh, going to create uh, awareness in terms of the, of the bill, but also in terms of how we, we implement. So the, the strategy deals with that as well, how we increase that uh, awareness. It also deals with issues related to intergovernmental um, uh, support, where we, we liaise or collaborate with our, our sister departments in terms of uh, how do we deal with issues related to preparedness, to issues related to fire suppression and, and all of that, and how do we liaise uh, with municipalities. It also looks at issues related uh, to fuel load reduction, issues related to response, and also issues related uh, to recovery. That is just as part of uh, the introduction um, that uh, we, we, are, we are looking at. And also in terms of the, um, the working on fire program, some of these uh, issues in the new terms of reference have been uh, um, uh, included to make sure that FPAs are supported. So Chair, without wasting time, I'm going to go straight to um, Okay, to page 10, where we start with the free state. Um, Close it. It's, it's yeah, okay. Um, yeah, okay. So I move straight uh, to page um, nine where we start uh, with the free state. And then when we look at uh, a free state, um, there is a clause uh, or an input under section on a clause two that uh, uh, was not elaborated on. Uh, it is uh, related to the alignment of that uh, of the traditional leadership and uh, governance framework act, which has now been replaced by the traditional and Khoisan uh, leadership um, act of 2019. So the comment there was that uh, the, the municipality consent uh, must be aligned in terms of that act and now uh, we have uh, considered that. And then the next one was on uh, clause three where uh, we asked, uh, there was a, a, a comment that we must uh, replace a municipality with municipalities and our comment here is that um, the way the, the clauses are written are such that they are aligned to the Local Government Municipal Structures Act, which refers to the municipality uh, consent. And then the next uh, page that I'm going to go to will be page uh, 14. Uh, Page, yeah, okay. yeah, page uh, 14. This one deals uh, with uh, where there was a comment uh, about the fact that the penalties needed to be harsher, especially uh, if uh, uh, we, we realize that people have been negligent uh, in terms of starting the fires. Um, there is a, a support from us on this. And uh, in terms of what Linda had already spoken about at the beginning of the meeting, that we would want to um, if allowed to have this uh, aligned uh, to the Adjustment of Fines Act, where um, we would have to deal with the category uh, um, uh, one offenses, which will not uh, which will uh, uh, not be exceeding 10 million in line with the National Environment Management uh, Laws uh, Amendment Act. Um, and then it also goes uh, to in the next page on the, sec on the second category uh, offenses, which are not exceeding 5 million. And then the third category of offenses, which are, are not exceeding a, a million. And these are all um, uh, similar to the, the section uh, 34 of NEMA. So uh, that is our suggestion uh, on this one. And then um, the next matter that we, th uh, we think we did not cover well would be on page 
21, where there was a comment about um, the uncontrolled invasive alien uh, vegetation, which tends to increase the fuel load. Um, and there was a request that uh, the, the municipality and the department should use these to, uh, to create jobs as they remove um, the, 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 the alien species. Uh, in our response, we are noting that um, there is a program already in place in terms of uh, the Working for Water program, uh, which um, uh, deals with issues of uh, alien uh, um, removal, and it also does um, uh, create uh, uh, those jobs. And then on the next slide was the issue about the reporting of felt uh, fires, um, where the, there's, there's an indication that there is a lack of general information of where this can be done. Uh, so we are noting that it is the, the fires are reported to uh, the FPAs or to the local municipality. And I think, uh, uh, Chair, what we could also do as a department is to try and make sure that we, we uh, publish the, the details of the FPAs, because I think later in the document, there was, some, there was a comment about um, that uh, uh, um, stakeholders would not know how to contact um, uh, these, um, these uh, uh, FPAs. And then the next one was on uh, medicinal plants, where the, the issue of collection uh, of the medic medicinal plants uh, was uh, cited and needed to be regulated. So we are saying here that um, the, we do understand and we do note that the uncontrolled fires can be destructive, but the issue of the control of access to the control and collection of medicinal plants is catered for under, under the, um, uh, the National Forest Act, which is Act number 84. Uh, and I think there's a typo there, it says 101. Uh, Act number 84 of the Act, which deals with access in terms of these, uh, medicinal, uh, these medicinal plants. And then the next one was on page 23, which deals uh, with the issue of the legal or the illegal uh, dumping sites, which um, uh, a major uh, a problem in terms of starting the fires. Uh, I think this item, we had included it in the, um, in the generic uh, uh, issues. And after the, the, the discussion at the previous meeting, we've put it back uh, into this, um, uh, into the responses, where we are saying in terms of um, a sandral, um, they, they have now been, um, um, compelled to join the FPAs, but also if they do not join, then they, they are uh, in the a category two offense in terms of the actual act. And at the same time, and there is a proposal that there could be consideration that we add the administrative enforcement power to issue the compliant um, compliance notices, uh, similar to those that are in the NEMA. Uh, in terms of section 31L, right with section 34, and should there be a uh, non-compliance. And then uh, if we move to the Northern Cape, um, most uh, of the areas uh, in the Northern Cape were covered. If we move to page 29, yes, in, in terms of, uh, sorry, sorry, start with page 28 at the bottom. Um, this one um, uh, says that uh, the bill should uh, be aligned or be consistent with the Fire Brigade Services Act within the municipality. Uh, this, uh, we, we are saying that, uh, yes, it is not uh, inconsistent. And this was a, a discussion we had in the previous meeting and, we, and there was that consideration in terms of how do we align um, ourselves with the other, with the other um, uh, 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 legislation. And then uh, in terms of page 29, where there was a comment that section seven, and section 26 should spell out um, who should be responsible for the training of uh, uh, the traditional uh, uh, leaders. Uh, what we are indicating here is that um, 
the the this need, does not need to be spelled out uh, in the act itself because it's it's a part of the support that we are providing and we had also indicated in our previous meeting that as a department uh, we are getting a, a, a service provider to provide the training uh, for people to become uh, peaceful officers, and this will include uh, leaders. And then the, the next item under section three of the principal act, uh, the one on the uh, land uh, uh, fill sites or the dumping sites, is the same as the one that we've dealt with under three state, which was initially uh, in the in in the um, uh, um, general issues in the previous uh, presentation. And then if we move to page thirty four. The one uh, on uh, fire risks, where there was a comment that uh, as common transnet uh, do uh, uh, present um, a fire risk, uh, they should be at the forefront uh, of also there, there's an issue about how do people then claim uh, for the losses. Um, firstly, uh, the, this current bill does uh, force that uh, all the SOEs or entities should be part of the FPAs. But if we also want to look at issues related to uh, compensation, uh, we are saying that uh, there is compensation that is uh, provided under Section 34 of the of the Principal Act, where there is presumption of negligence. Uh, if a person is not um, a part of, of the FPA. But at the same time, uh, we are noting that the court may be able to award compensation uh, in terms of loss or, or damages uh, in line with section 300 of the, of the act. So there could uh, uh, be uh, some sort of a, an amendment uh, to look at these compliance uh, and notices um, where uh, there could be we, we could look at the uh, 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 the insertion of a, of 29.a where we have the power to issue um those uh, uh, compliance net notices which are in line or similar to the wording uh, of section 31 n of uh, enema so this could be a, a consideration in terms of of um, this issue um and then page 14. And then um, on page 40, there was a, a request or a comment that there needs to be an improvement in terms of communication uh, with uh, traditional leaders, um, especially um, on the new roles and responsibilities that they would be taking over and the legal uh, implications, and also the communication of meetings should be done uh, timelessly. That is supported, and it's something that uh, we will uh, deal with uh, internally as a department to make sure that we communicate uh, all the information uh, on time. And then if we move to Mbumalanga, which starts on page 44. Uh, in terms of Mbumalanga, um, The, the, I think this one we addressed in the previous meeting was the issue of the fire in the open air, where we were saying that this uh, definition must be read uh, in line uh, with uh, section 10, uh, when the minister has published a fire day, uh, a, a warning that there is a, a fire a fire, a fire danger uh, a rating. So in that front, it would mean that if even if a person has been exempted or whatever the case may be, if there's that fire danger rating, even if the, the work was for uh, um, a, 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 a land management, then it should uh, it should be con con discontinued. And then on page 45, um, there is consideration in terms of uh, the fact that uh, some communities or farmers would not have uh, funds to pay for insurance, and therefore the, the bill should provide an avenue for compensation. And this uh, is in line with the, 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 the compensation discussion we, we have above, 
uh, when uh, where we are dealing with uh, that they, there is an opportunity to to claim for damages, but in terms of the Criminal Procedures Act, but also there is compensation under the Disaster Management Act of two thousand and two. Um, where landowners are able to, to be provided um, with, with that assistance uh, through the National Disaster Management uh, uh, Center. And also um, here we are also saying that the, 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 the committee could consider adding a power similar to that of Section 34 of, of NEMA, uh, where the criminal court is given the power to award compensation for loss of damage or loss of damage or loss for loss or damages as a result of the offense uh, that is uh, that is committed and i think it's it's the same matter that we dealt with under um the northern uh, the free state sorry and then the one matter that we did not cover uh, and uh this one would be on page 58 Uh, where there are issues with, with regards to pollution uh, and uh, where there was a request that uh, the committee uh, was requested to bring in uh, the different uh, government departments who are involved, uh, especially the MRE in terms of the abundant uh, mines. And we are noting uh, uh, this, and I think as part of our non funding all the government uh, uh, departments together to try and make sure that there is implementation, uh, we will do so. But also uh, we are noting that in terms of the, 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 the work that we do in terms of section four of the act, if there are any losses, they would be incurred uh, in that way. Um, the issues of awareness we have covered. And then if we go to the next province, which was the Zulu Natal, which starts from which starts from page 66. Uh, those ones we covered. Uh, okay, then we go to page 71 under case at N. The area that was not covered uh, uh, here or detailed was the, the, the comment that uh, talked to a mechanism that uh, a parliament can, can use to oversee the implementation of the act when it has been signed uh, to law. So what we are saying here is that already the committee has that oversight uh, function where we are able to report uh, on the things that we are doing or on the issues that we are unable to do. So that, that oversight uh, function already um, exists. Uh, the next one deals with the issues of losses. And I think we've, we've covered that uh, in the previous um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, responses. And also the one on the next page which deals with penalties. Also, it has been uh, covered as well. And then on page 73, uh, there was a request that the grant must provide, um, I'm sorry, the bill must provide a, a special grant uh, to enable um, the use of helicopters to, to, to fight fires. Um, we are saying that in terms of section seven, uh, there is already an empower, uh, um, a clause that empowers the minister to provide a, a financial or other assistance to, to the FPAs. And this is one of the issues that we are dealing with as part of the strategy that um, uh, for, for FPAs that we are currently uh, developing. And then on page 74, um, there was a specific request that uh, the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development must be included as part of uh, the landowner so that uh, it can be assigned a, a clear responsibility. We are saying here that uh, whether the, the department it's itself as a landowner already is included under the definition of the land or of the um, of the landowners within the act. So whether it 
it it land it uh, rents out that land so that responsibility um uh, remains uh, to be there and uh, because now they are owners they have that responsibility to make sure that they take those precautions in terms of section 12 1 um where um, they must make sure that should a fire start in their area they are able to 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 contain it but also they should have fire breaks and and all the uh, uh, precautions that they are required uh, to have and should there be any uh, uh, losses or civil uh, uh, proceedings that are, are brought uh, uh, to them then a section 34 would then be able to kick in in terms of the damages and then on 74 on 76 um this one also deals with the alignment, which we've dealt with uh, uh, under both uh, Free State and uh, um, and um, Northern Cape. And then um, uh, also the, the one on close to where we're talking about the, the land uh, field sites that also we've also dealt with as well uh, in the previous um, uh, section. And then on page 78, this one uh, deals with um, section 10, um, which talks to uh, the communication of the, of, of the fire danger rating using the newspapers. And this is the area where Linda had uh, commented on at the beginning of the meeting, uh, where we are already suggesting some wedding there, depending on, on, on how then uh, we would uh, be able to move forward uh, on this one. So that's both on page 78, uh, 79, 80, and, on, and beginning of page 81. Okay. Uh, and then the one on the consequences, uh, should, that, should there be non-compliance by municipalities, uh, the suggestion of um, uh, having the compliance uh, and notices is also uh, repeated uh, here. And then if we go to page 91. Um, uh, in pay, on page 91, there was a comment that the, recruit, the recruitment process of FPA members or firefighters should be communicated timelessly um, and should be transparent. So our response here is that uh, chapter two of the act uh, provides for uh, uh, read with the regulations that were issued in 2003, provides a clear process on how these FPAs uh, should be established, uh, including uh, how the, land, the, the landowners should be able to join. And then when it comes to the issue of the firefighters, which are aligned uh, with the working on fire program, um, there is a, a, a recruitment process uh, that is uh, followed, and uh, that process uh, it does get uh, to be uh, advertised. And then um, in the Northwest, which starts from page from here, uh, the one in the fire in the open air was included. Uh, the one um, on the... I think this one was also dealt with in the previous meeting uh, where we were looking at a provision of uh, exemption in terms of lighting a fire when the, the, the fire danger is high or is extreme. And then there was a comment on page 95, which dealt with uh, the, the concern with full implementation of uh, the act or the full implementation uh, of the act. Um, so what we are saying here is now that uh, we've already started with the development of this um, FPA strategy, which we didn't have previously, uh, we are confident that we will then uh, be able to implement uh, section seven, which provides for the minister to, to provide um, these FPAs uh, with uh, uh, some um, uh, assistance. So I think in, in that uh, format, uh, we will then be able to, to deal with that. Then with issues related to enforcement, uh, we've uh, uh, mentioned that um, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, previously the traditional leaders were not uh, included and also the SOEs were not compelled in terms of joining uh, the FPAs and this current bill uh, does that. And it also makes sure that we are able to train uh, uh, people who want to be part of the peace officers so that they can then be able to, um, to, 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 to enforce the act. Um, and then on page, on page uh, 98, uh, this one also uh, says that the section seven of the principal act uh, be amended so that uh, it provides for the minister to, to provide a risk related uh, compensation to, to FPAs. Uh, for example, if there's a, a volunteer um, that has uh, uh, lost their lives or have uh, had a disability uh, during um, fighting the fires. So in this one, we've looked at um, the Disaster Management Act, which provides for disaster management uh, volunteers. And because we, co we have collaboration with the National Disaster Management uh, Center, as they are also amending their act. So th those issues are, are covered there. And then on the next one, um, still on section seven, where there's a request uh, to amend, to provide for equi equitable uh, support by the minister um, where there is a, a fire disaster. So we are saying here the issues, the issue related to the declaration of disasters is also covered in the Disaster Management Act. Um, so we are confident that through this and the collaboration that we have, those issues will be covered. Um, the next one uh, still on section seven deals with um, the intervention by the minister uh, in terms of assisting farmers who have lost um, uh, the grazing uh, land uh, once uh, while waiting for the declaration uh, 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 of a, a disaster. Um, we are saying that section 55 deals with this, but at the same time, um, just to note that the Department of Agriculture and Land Reform has um, a, a strategy where they are able to provide support to the farmers uh, in case of, uh, of such uh, uh, disasters. That was a hundred. Um, oh, and then on the next one, uh, on section nine, um, where or section nine or ten of the act, where there was a request for an amendment to to enable the minister to provide FPAs with um, satellite uh, Im images so that they are able to prepare uh, uh, um, uh, precisely or accordingly. So in this one, we are saying that uh, there is a provision under chapter three of the act which provides for the fire danger rating system. And um, there is that responsibility of, um, of making sure that the system is up and running. And this is done through a source where they, they are able to provide this. But at the same time, as a department, we have a responsibility to produce what we call a felt fire risk map which is able to indicate um, areas that are exposed to, to, to high uh, incidences of uh, felt fires. We are in the process of up updating that uh, felt fire risk uh, map as we speak. And then, um, I think the rest of the issues raised uh, in the Northwest were covered uh, in our previous meeting. Uh, then if we go to Limpopo, which is on page 111. Okay, um, in this one, uh, the issue of the, the CPAs, uh, was covered uh, in the previous meeting. If we go to page 113 under section 10.2, where the, there was a request that there should be a restriction in terms of the collection of firewood. Um, so this uh, and that there should be a permit system to, to regulate the collection. Um, 
this is not supported in this act because it is already covered in the in, in section 71 of the national forest act which uh, allows for um uh, uh, the collection of, of 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 the firewood and where we are able to issue uh, those licenses uh, for the different uh, uh, um, uh, stakeholders whether it's for some subsistence use or it's for commercial purposes and then um it also look at looks at whether the trees uh, are in uh, which category of uh, uh, protection. So that is why then they, we are not necessarily supporting it on this particular act because, because it is already covered. And then on page 115, um, there it says there that there was a comment about uh, clear limits in terms of how the, in terms of exercising the newly conferred powers um, to eliminate uh, abuse uh, by the traditional uh, leaders. So in this one, uh, we are saying, uh, because we are going to uh, ensure that there is training of the traditional leaders as they form part of the peace officers and they are going to be trained by a competent uh, um, um, a service uh, a provider. So we feel that this is uh, um, adequately uh, covered uh, in our uh, in, in the current uh, implementation plans that we have uh, for this um, for the act and for the bill. And then on page one one oh, sorry one one seven in the last uh, column, it also talks to the penalties which we've dealt with. A, in the in the responses above um and also on the next page page 118 where there was a comment that the, the section 26 to 8 might create conflicts um uh, in the rural communities where traditional uh, leaders face all sorts of accusations as they implement uh, the act. So we are saying that these uh, uh, traditional leaders will receive uh, a training. But also to just say that uh, because we also do um, the, FP, the, the assessments uh, on an annual basis, uh, so we will be able to pick up on these things and see what additional training would be required and augment the current training that uh, we've already set out uh, for the peace officers. And then if we move to Gauteng, which starts from page one, two, three, uh, the, the, here there was the issue about, um, oh, uh, issues related to, to enforcement, which we are supporting, as indicated previously, that there could be that uh, administrative uh, insertion where we look at uh, the powers uh, to issue the complaints uh, notices, and that would be aligned uh, to um, uh, the what uh, uh, NEMA currently has. And then the next one as well, which would be section six, which is on page 126, which starts there. Also, we are also in support that uh, in terms of um, making sure that uh, the actions uh, with regards to inspections, with regards to enforcement and, in, and issuing of uh, the fines are compulsory. Uh, this is an area that we can look through it through that in session of 29A uh, with regards to the powers to issue a compliance um, and notices as indicated um, in the previous um, 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 uh, uh, in sessions uh, in the presentation above. And then um, on page 130, the last one, um, it says that the bill should make it easy for conduct details uh, of FPAs to be shared. Um, we, we are saying that as much as this is a, a, a good idea because it promotes that uh, stakeholders are able to, to know where to report. Uh, we do not think it should be formed part of the bill, but it's something that we can do as a department to make sure that through our website, through our offices, that information is shared to make sure that uh, the, the, the stakeholders are able to conduct the relevant FPAs should they uh, need uh, to, 
to do so. And then uh, on the next page, uh, there was a comment about the fact that even though uh, communities or, or, ben, or, or stakeholders would want to participate uh, in the bill, because they do not own land, the bill should consider that uh, it, it, it considers the issue of land ownership so that they can then be able to implement uh, uh, the bill. So uh, we are saying uh, this uh, uh, is part of the work that is done through uh, the Department of Agriculture and Land Reform, and uh, they can then uh, uh, you know, give details in terms of uh, how do they make sure that there's that uh, land ownership uh, assigned uh, to different communities through their land reform uh, related uh, processes. But in terms of this act, uh, in terms of the definition of uh, owner, uh, we do include that uh, it includes a person who controls the land in question, who, who has this the land. So it, it does not look only on, on, on the fact that you must literally own the land, but it also looks at whether you have the right to use that uh, particular land. Um, then there was a comment that um, uh, section 26-2A must specify that the appointment of uh, the accredited, accredited uh, institutions will not follow um, tender processes. So our view in this is that uh, uh, as, a, as a department, we need to make sure that the funds that we have are used um, um, uh, and we are in compliant uh, with the relevant uh, legislation so that we are able to account for those funds. Therefore, we will need to make sure that uh, whatever we do, it's in line with the PFMA and therefore uh, the the, the DFFE supply chain uh, processes would need to be followed for us when we do the appointment of these, um, of these uh, um, uh, institutions. Um, okay, I think uh, in terms of the emerging issues and uh, uh, how Deng, we have covered them, issues related to consultations, issues related to uh, fire breaks. And then if we move to the Eastern Cape, which starts from 139. Sorry, 138, apologies. Okay. Um, that, that slide we've dealt with um, uh, in terms of the amendment of the, the reference that we have uh, in, the, in the act. Um, and then on page 140, um, where there was a comment that the bill is, uh, is, is silent in terms of uh, conservation, including conservation banning that excludes a uh, medicinal edible fruits and cultural valued uh, 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 trees. So um, there, there was also a request that the, the bill must have a clause that, that enables the exemption of certain areas from being banned to enable uh, traditional, tradi traditional healers to continue servicing um, their clients. Um, I think uh, besides that, this is also covered uh, in section 10 uh, of this current bill, where um, there would need to, to, to be a, a permit if anyone wants to ban uh, in areas where the, the fire danger is rated ex high or extreme. We are also saying that the National Forest Act also makes sure or deals with issues of conservation of these protected, protected trees. And this, um, this um, uh, um, um, a legislation must always be read uh, together to make sure that uh, we are able to cover all of, of these um, issues. Um, then there was a comment on page 145, where it was saying that um, uh, the membership fees um, that local and district municipalities um, should pay are high and uh, are unaffordable 
uh, by some of the municipalities. There should be a consideration uh, that um, the municipalities are exempted, uh, especially if they have fu functional fire brigade uh, services, you know, and then that could be taken as a form of a membership contribution of some sort. So our view here is that um, the, the act itself allows for FPAs to have its own rules. So if we put it in the bill, then it might uh, discriminate uh, some municipalities that are really in need, sorry, some FPAs that are really in need of those F, of the of the membership fees. So the rules within the FPAs can look into these matters and, and see whether um, the, the fees are affordable or not affordable. And if they are not affordable, what uh, uh, mechanisms they can uh, come up with to, to support uh, or to make sure that there is payment or, or, of those fees. And also we are uh, through the, the FPA support uh, strategy, we are looking uh, into that, into saying what type of support can we provide to the FPAs in terms of uh, managing of, in terms of management of the FPAs, because some of these uh, membership fees are used for the direct administration of that particular FPA. So I think to just put it straight into the bill uh, might uh, work against some of the, F the F of the FPAs, even though it's, it, it supports other FPAs. So the FPA rules would have to uh, uh, be looked at and that particular FPA would have to look at what's the best way of dealing um, with that uh, a matter uh, going forward. <clears throat> Um, I think for Eastern Cape, we had covered most of the issues when we were dealing with the previous uh, discussion. If we go to Western Cape, which starts from page 152. Okay, uh, in the Western Cape, um, I think the first two pages were covered. Um, on page 155, Um, we, uh, yeah, 155, um, where the, the comment was that um, the act in the past has not, had not been in, enforced because there was no mechanism to enforce it. So we are saying that uh, in this uh, appeal, we are dealing with, with that. And then there's also a, a proposal to include a, uh, uh, the peace officers, the training of peace officers, but also the inclusion of the traditional uh, leaders to be part of the people that can be trained uh, to, to deal um, with the enforcement uh, related issues. And then the rest of the issues in the Western Cape uh, relate to issues of awareness, issues of um, firefighting equipment, uh, issues of um, um, consultation, uh, which um, uh, we have covered, uh, where we've uh, taken note that uh, we need to improve in terms of um, a consultation. I think the one specific issue uh, which did not just come actually from the, the Western Cape um, was uh, on, on the fact that uh, the, 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 the um, the bill was received uh, at, at the meeting and there was no thorough time to, to, to engage with the contents. Uh, so that was brought uh, to the committee. But at the same time, there was recognition um, that some of the people that might have attended the pre the preparatory meetings um, for for the for the for the consultations might not have been the same people that ended up uh, uh, attending. So there was a, a bit of that that disjuncture, but it's something that uh, we'll probably need to improve on as we go into the next uh, consultations of the other bills as well. Um, I think chair. Yes, I think chair. That would be all from my side in terms of travel, of covering the areas that uh, uh, we might have missed uh, in the previous uh, meeting. I am not sure whether um, Linda would want uh, to add anything, uh, but that will be all from my side. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much, DDG. Linda, is there anything you want to add?
Chair, there's nothing um, at the moment uh, that I feel is necessary to be added at this stage. Okay. Thank you so much. Colleagues, that's it. They've managed to address almost all the issues as raised. Are there issues that you want to raise, issues that you want clarity on, colleagues? Over to you. Our colleagues in the meeting, I don't see any end. Is it an affirmation that all is well or something else? Okay, now I have two ends. Let me start with Honorable Bryant, then you'll be followed by Honorable Mbata. In that order. Thanks, Chairperson. Yes, I have also looked through um, the submission, and um, I think it is a fair reflection um, of uh, the public hearings and the inputs that we received. Um, so just a big thank you to the officials. I know it's a mammoth job to collate all of that information and get something into a format that's presentable to the committee. So um, a big thank you to, to all of them. And um, yes, no, no objections um, from our side, Chair. Thank you. It's myself now, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I think uh, the report is, is uh, there's no um, questions about it. But the only thing that I've, 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 I've noticed, uh, DT Jim Kizzi, on the personal on the PPE, it's written pro personal protection equipment, but it should be personal protective equipment. If you can correct the protect protection to protective, this is how it's written. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Lombata, for that comment. Can we then, if the report, the report was sent to you, colleagues, you've seen that. But I can also ask the team to flight it so that we go through it, all of us. That's the next item on the agenda. It's a draft consolidated report of the Committee on Environment, Forestry and Fisheries from written submissions and public hearings on the National Field and Forest Fire Amendment Bill held in the nine provinces of South Africa from 27 May to 23 October, 2022. Let's go to page one. Uh, you can see that's the covering Memo de deals with all those issues, service delivery issues, oversight and accountability. Then it lists all the relevant government entities and users. Then we need to have the concluding uh, remarks. And then in terms of the table of figures, then it captures the total number and speakers and attendees of each provincial hearing. And then the gender representation of speakers in percentage from all nine provinces. 
and then age composition of attendees in the public hearings from all nine provinces in the support of the amendment B percentage. The introduction will only deal with the when was the bill and the adverts published and when we called for written submissions and then uh, the submissions that we received at the closing date. And then we held the public hearings in all the nine provinces. And that figure on table one, it shows the province, municipality and the date and the venues that we visited then. Yes, it continues to show you that we've been to KZN, Northwest Limpopo, Gauteng, Eastern Cape as well, including the Western Cape, where we ended on the 23rd of October, 2022. And then it depicts a total number of 5,146 community members that have attended our public hearing throughout the country. And then we got 554, that is the 10.7 of attendees that made oral submission on the bill. Somebody's microphone is on a eh. DM. Chairperson, I'm, I'm sorry to, to disturb you. I, I had my my hand up is just the clarity from myself. Just want to find out since this is the report of the portfolio committee, consolidated report, do you still need us as a department on this platform? Just yourself, yourself, you can go. Yes, you can go. We only remain with your PLOs and whoever. Yeah. Yes, I can release you to go and do some work. Thank you very much. I think uh, DDG I know. is the relevant one. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Then it's fine. We have excused the DM. She has got other commitments to attend to and the team they can work. Yeah, then I was trying to show you how many, and then the figure in the map, it shows us the provincial breakdown. And then, yes, Limpopo had recorded the highest attendance, which is at 17.3. And then the first state was 8.8. .8. That should be the lowest, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Then let's proceed. Then uh, each province has got more attendees than speakers, as illustrated in figure one. Uh, you can see the report saying then, then figure one shows us how it happened and the percentage are catered for in that uh, first page. And then you can see we're still living in a patriarchal society. Ne? Yeah, when males, they do speak more than females, although females are more than males. That's the gender representation and percentage from all the nine provinces. Then the figure three shows the age composition of attendees in the public hearings. You can see age 36 to 45. Then is yeah, you can see that. Then we need to do much about the youth. Then 
Uh, the other issue, we can go to the support in figure four. Uh, that's the Western Cape where you have 59%, Eastern Cape. You see, first state in terms of support tops. Then, in essence, this means us to us that the bill was well supported, though the speakers have raised issues associated with the practicality of implementing the bill and associated resources. DDG, no data. Move to the next page. Then on the amendments, then that's why it this captures all the proposed amendments as raised in terms of the title, in terms of section two. And then to be as well. Then uh, the definition of in two G to with regard to what felt fire means. And two G should read. Yeah, there were so many inputs when it comes to two G. How do you define felt fire? Yeah, 2G, there was a lot of issues that were raised on 2G. You can move on. And then section three, also there were issues that were raised in line with regard to the timeline with the minister should respond. That instead of it being left open-ended, and also 3.3a with regard to compelling municipalities, also 3.3a with regards to the creation of space for communities to form FPA without relying on municipal involvement, and then also in session after section three, capital three A, this proposal for an insertion for as long as no fire protection association has been formed and whose boundaries are already inclusive of the area described. And then there was issues raised in relation to section three, Four, with regard to the formation of the FPA. Let's move to page 14. The issues that raise, we raise in terms of section four, five. And then an issue around 47A with regard to the issue of municipality, the DTG has dealt with that earlier. And then section 47B, in fact, those issues that the department were responding to, these are the issues that were captured as they are. We can move to the next page. Issues raised on section five. I won't go to the detail to say these are the issues as per section five. On section six as well, there were issues raised there that also captures section seven. Section seven goes up to page 18, if I'm not mistaken, is it 18? Yeah, to page 17. Yeah, 
that's the gist we're in people led to it's around resourcing. You can see there's been a lot of issues around there. Then section nine. There was an issues raised there, but it's a note of what is currently happening. Then section 10. Issues that we raised there. Can move to the next one. 12. Eighteen. Also, section eighteen, section nineteen, section twenty, twenty two, twenty four, and then section twenty five, twenty six. deals with the issues around traditional letters. Then the next section, section 29, 32, 33, 34. And then three deals with the concerns relating to implementation. So that's the issues that, that are there. It's listed there on page 24 to 25. Yeah. Yes, you can move to the even 26 caters for that. Uh, Concerns as raised to the bill, then we can move. Sorry, Chair, on. just just one thing on. Yes, proceed, Honourable Brent. Thanks, Chair. Just one thing at the bottom of page twenty six. You can just go down a little bit. Uh, it's uh, where are we? Um. Yeah, the very, the very last bullet point. I think just in terms of wording, I know it might be semantics, but uh, that last bullet says the bill should consider that most blacks cannot afford to pay insurance. Can we change that to black people? I just think it's, it's, it just comes across as a little bit, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't think the, 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 it's, it's intended to be offensive, but I think if one can just change that, I, I feel more comfortable. Thanks, Jim. Joseph, can you comment on that as raised by the Honorable Bryant? Yeah, it can be changed, Chair. It effectively means the same thing. Okay, just do that now. All right. And then move. Okay. Let's deal with imaging issues.
Next page selector. Then the issue around fire prevention, firefighting and equipment and training. Those are the issues that are raised there. Yes, proceed to the next page. I'll hear the colleagues shouting if there's any issues that they feel need to be correctly captured or corrected. Then on the work of the FPAs. Sorry, Chair. Honorable Bryant. Yeah, Chair, sorry, it's just it's just again the, the, the language again on this page with reference to um to the race groups. So if we can just go down again. Joseph, you hear that? Yes, there we go. Just just again there. So the department should provide clarity on whether blacks should form their FPA, black people. Um, it's sides. just a little, just a little bit above there, yeah, in terms of forming. Yeah, there we go. That bit there. Yeah, and then just mm -hmm. again, sorry above there. Just I'm sorry. I know this is semantic, but I think it's important just for respect to people. Uh, forfeit uh, seized or forfeited to white people should follow escape from uh, 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 black owned farms. Uh, so further down, it's a forfeited to black land owners of to yes to white yeah to white people yeah should escape from black owned farms. Perfect, thank you. And then there's just one more on page 61 at the end, but that's it, thanks. And black owned should be hyphenated. There you go. Black owned, white owned, hyphenated. Okay, sir. Joseph, black owned, hyphenated. <laughs> <laughs> it's noted, Honorable Paulson. Hyphenated. Okay. And then you can also correct that when it comes to 61. Who's talking as if at the background while we're in the meeting? Nazir, remove your microphone then. My apologies, Chi. I'm, I mean, I'm sitting in men's parliament as well. <laughs> okay. Let's proceed then. Then the issue on working on fire. Okay, move. It should be not this doesn't deal with one minister. I think it's ministers, ne? 4.5. Cut across. Mm. Then it will change the bullet there to do not, ministers do not request. Because you remember agriculture, local government, they are, they've got various rules to play to with regard to this. Okay. 
And then the spacing there on 4.6, at least you've seen that. Let's move to the next page on invasive alien species. Then biodiversity conservation, biodiversity use and conservation. Next item, electric cables. The National Road Network. Awareness programs. Let's move to the next item. Reinstatement of Rangers program. Then there's an issue around service delivery issues. Councillors and municipal services. That's always the case. Next item. Access to land is an issue that has been raised sharply there that relates to the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development. Let's move to the next. It's around agricultural support and provision of inputs. Okay, let's move. Bad roads. These are the access ones. Uh, I think you need to specify that because you started with the national road framework up. Ne? You can say this is bad municipal access roads, if I'm not, or whatever, bad access roads so that you differentiate with the other one. Access, just right by the access routes. Because we dealt with the item there on the national road infrastructure, yes. Then it, it says, it talks to, to both your provincial district and local routes, okay? Yeah, you've put it nicely there on the first bullet. Okay. Mm, before that, let's go back. Yeah, on the South African National Road Agency. Remember, there are provincial road agencies as well that are independent from the National Road Agency. And there are those roads that connect cities. They are provincial roads. So when you say South African National Road Agency, what will be the role of the provincial road agencies? Because I see you are also putting municipalities. You see the bullet I'm referring to, John Joseph? Yes, Chair. Mm. How do we coin it to bring everybody? Mm -hmm. I'm raising this because also the provinces remember they are responsible. In, in, in Limpopo in particular, they've even taken over the district routes to the provinces. You hear what I'm trying to say? Yes. I think also in Northwest. Mm.
Um, you can say the South African National Road Agency, the provincial road agencies, and municipalities. Then you, you, you bring everybody. Yeah, then it's fine. Okay, then let's talk, go to beneficiation. Okay, we do to cooperation with non-governmental organizations. Then I think you need to then put NGO NGOs brackets because you're not gonna copy. You're not copying it all. Then the same thing on the 5.7 should be community property association in full first. Property is not check the spell check of property. Then bracket CPA. It's CP associations, ne? not one. SD. Sorted. Thank you. Then we move down to the next item. Deforestation and firewood and charcoal. Then you press 5.9 down. Fire brigade services. Okay. FT penalties for stray livestock. Okay, okay. And then housing and informal settlements. That bullet before waste management can we delete it? Waste management and pollution. Okay. Proceed to the next item. This Afri South African police service in the judicial system. Okay. Let's move to the next item. Okay. Lack of skilling and employment opportunities. That's the issues as raised. It's a topical issue, also a thorny issue that affect our people. Mm. 
management of common ages and municipal lands. Those are the issues as raised. Then we come to the issue of water and sanitation services. Those are the issues as raised there with regard to the issue of water and sanitation. Next page. Then the oversight and accountability, uh, the general oversight reporting, is, that's the issue that we need to do as parliament. This is for us. Then oversight to all those uh, uh, government departments that is got to share on this legislation. I can move to the next page. The issues are very explicit on what needs to happen. Diaper, diaper, polar glove, is this how you write diaper? Yeah, on there's a bullet, someone diaper and beer bottles. Should be diaper or diapers. It's not one. You so saw it, me? and beer bottles. Okay. Then we can move. The Mapale landfill side is where, just to refresh our memory, because we must specify where it is. There are so many. You can see that one. Or if you don't do that, you just say, because it's across, we've had this to operate the municipality land field sites. It's a general trend for you not to be specific to one. You, you see what I'm talking about? Ne? Land field sites across the country are a major problem. They are just being mismanaged. Noted, Chair. Yeah. yeah, it's not one, only one. It led the issue of landfill sites, it's a problem in the country. Is the minister and the municipalities, ne? not the municipality. Okay. We can, the guidelines, issues, regulations, and guidelines is a matter. We can proceed. The South Call matter is still outstanding. It's very clear. I'm happy that it came back. Let's move to the next page. Funding. Funding, funding. This bill won't be possible if it's not fully funded. Awareness and outreach programs. Department, once this done, you must roll out this awareness program. More so now we're faced with climate change. This should be very critical.
and then the role of basic on basic education. Is done on the, we move into the next item on page 59. Can you, Minister B should be capital E, also with E. Okay. Then FPA issues. Okay. Then Okay. Then let's move to the next one. Next item. Cooperative governance and traditional affairs. Police services. Sorry, Chair. Yes. When we, when we refer to the department, uh, on traditional affairs, uh, I, I remember, Chair, that uh, uh, there is an inclusion of, of Khoisan in, in that uh, department. Remember, they were, they were... The traditional affairs, it includes both Khoisan. Is a department here? Yeah? Oh, it's a department. No, it's okay. a department that the Khoisan, like the TKLA at the traditional and Khoisan Leadership Act, it covers that. But the name of the department is called Department of Cooperative and Traditional Affairs. And the Khoisan community is included there in traditional affairs. So once you talk about traditional affairs, you know you are also including the Khoisan community. South African police, thanks for raising that. I know you want to be sure because it's a sensitive matter that they always raise, they are not adequately taken care of. Thank you so much, colleague, for that. SAPS, Sports, Arts and Culture. <laughs> 6.9, the government policy on ageism. Okay. Public enterprises, it must just go down 6.9. Public enterprises, there we are. 6.11 deals with district and local municipalities. To the next page. Land agra and agrarian affairs. Chair. Yes. Sorry, this was this was just the other page where um, I think put it point three under six point twelve um, subsequent uh, implementation, um, so that yeah. black people can have access to land. And this one just says so that black can have access to land. Black people, yeah. Yes. Super. And then above that, the, the line above that. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Black people. There you are. Thank That's you. It. No problem. Thank you, dear colleague, for raising these issues very consistently. Okay. 
social development, women, youth, and persons with disability. There was an issue on water that was raised in Limpopo. Then we make concluding remarks. That's okay. We're just making some concluding remarks. Yeah. So it is a summary of everything that you have dealt with on top there. And then we are saying the departmental presentations in future must bring along practical plans. Ne? Okay, that we and make resources available. That should precede the public hearings. And then this is actually what we have done since May. And then the report is here for us to consider this report as a true reflection of what we have done, all of us. As I said, it was a marathon, but what inspired me was the dedication, commitment, and it's our report because we all participated. I made sure that every one of us has a fair share on these public hearings. Having said that, uh, you can take it off so that I see members. Can I get a mover? And the second for this report to be adopted. It's a true reflection of what we've done during those months in provinces. I need to get a hand. Honorable Mkunu. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. And uh, thank you for the report. Uh, uh, it, indeed, it is a true reflection of what uh, uh, transpired during the this process, and I move that we adopt this report as the portfolio committee. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mtunu. Can I get a second? That the report be adopted. My hand is up, Chair. I, I second the, the report to be adopted. The same uh, what is it, honorable person? Is but that honorable the honorable wants to adopt a report of a public hearings where she only attended one session? Are you seconding yourself for the adoption of the report before you say what you are saying? Yes, I do. Okay. And let me correct, it wasn't one, se one session, Paulson. It was, it it was one, one session. session. No, 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 you're lying because that time you were not there when I was there. I okay. Maybe I wasn't the report is seconded by honorable person and honorable matter. <clears throat> Any objection to the report being adopted? No objection, Chip. That's a unanimous adoption of the report. Thank you so much, colleagues. Then what is the next item on the agenda, Jaleka? That was the last item. The last item is the person, person. Before, person before, that, before we adjourn, she person and then before I mean that is honorable. You want to do what? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I got I, I lost connection when we were going through the agenda at the very beginning to adopt the mm. agenda. I wanted mm. us to include the issue of Knoflox Kral as to what our brief is there. Are we, you know, so that, um, and I must say that they are aware that we are coming. And in order for us to not um, walk into a war zone, you know, I would like us to also to 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 make sure that those people that are coming there, or that when we come there, that Knoflox Kral community um, are going to be able to receive us warmly. We are not going there to. Um, we are going there to listen to to what the issues are, and to get an understanding. So I would like us to 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 have an idea as to what will our role be there as a committee on Friday, and I hope you're also going to be the chairperson. <laughs> What's the one? And honorable Mbata, and, 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 and honorable. Yes. Okay. Can we allow the? You want us to discuss it now? Yeah. Look, it doesn't doesn't have to be long, person. I I. It's just that um. You know, I would like us to have some understanding as to all of us to have the same understanding as to what what we are going to do there. What what our oversight entails. Uh, did you do the? It's just to sightseeing. Ne? And we then, just... yeah. yeah, and then let me check with she later if there are any other logistical arrangement that has been made thus far. Uh, I thought that would be communicated to us, but Chileka, are you ready to deal with that? Yes, Chair, I can. Uh, what I've done so far, I submitted the application to the House Chair for approval. So mm -hmm. that came back today. And then I invited uh, SAPS, the provincial department, and public works. So I invited uh, three departments, and then it will be ourselves uh, as the committee. Um, in terms of the program, we were going to develop it, but I will appreciate the, the guidance from members as to what needs to, to happen. Oh, I'm sorry, I also invited the, um, the municipality, the T. Baders uh, School of Municipality. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Okay. And that will be my last meeting with you, comrades. Sorry, colleagues, Friday. Um, Okay. That's Chief my last me. meeting day. We'll talk about it there. I'll yeah. be there, signing yeah. of the person. Yeah. Yeah. Are you okay no, no, Chairperson, I'm very, very unhappy that you're going to leave, but uh, be that as it may, Chairperson, it's, it's, I respect your decision. Um, I think you've done a sterling job here in steering this com committee in the way we'll you We'll do speeches on Friday, ne? But, okay. Uh, but before, you, before we close, Chairperson, I just want to ask Taileka, um, we she's invited other stakeholders and yeah. that's that public works the municipality but to my understanding there is a leadership structure in the community and can you, you can you give inputs and give it to Chileka to invite I will, I will give to in fact what I'm trying to say everybody was got a proposal on how best can we effectively maximize that oversight give your proposal to Chileka and then once it's consolidated it's going to be shared to all of us okay um, I, I'll, I'll do so chairperson because Thank I just you. don't want to 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 ignore the fact that there's an existing leadership structure that we need to engage with as well, so that they are also aware that we are coming, that it doesn't, you know, um, you know, we, we, regardless as to how we feel about Knoflox Kral, our own uh, political opinion, we have to accept there is a community of 5,000 people they have a leadership structure in place to represent them. 
So I think we we should um, make a point of acknowledging that if people have organized themselves, we have to respect that they've done so. Thank you, Honorable Bright. Over to you. Thank you for that input, Paulson. Honorable Bright. And it's thanks, well. thanks, thanks, Chairperson. I'm just cognizant of the fact that some of us might not be able to attend on Friday. Um, so uh, if you wouldn't mind just allowing me very briefly just to say um, on behalf of, of our committee, um, a big thank you to you for the, the incredible work that you have undertaken as our chairperson. Um, you will be sorely missed. Uh, we will also write to you to express our thanks at a later stage as well. Um, but uh, as, as the last sort of official meeting uh, virtually, uh, just a, a very big thank you to you um, for everything and, and best of luck uh, going forward. Thanks, Chair. I'm humbled by such nice words. It's a bittersweet end, but life has to go on. Yeah, I want to also appreciate your undivided support. You will recall recently we all went to the climate parliament. And then we have what we have learned out of that climate parliament was that working together as various political parties in parliament, we can do more. So, yeah. Thank you so much for such nice, comforting words. Paulson, you'll bid me farewell on your microphone is on, on Friday, I guess. Uh, yes, uh, definitely. I'm looking forward to you being there. That would be um, uh, uh, our final hurrah, uh, Chair. <laughs> is that that there won't be any briefcase to carry? I'll ask you to carry that for me. <laughs> uh, with pleasure. <laughs> And yeah. tell them. Uh, what Jay, you, you, Thank you. You're going to carry me this one because he knows oh. I'm the... Yeah, he He's does that. Yeah. Our last trip in the in George, you remember Honorable Dave, he was telling people he's my boyfriend. We are on a public platform, the entire nation now knows about us. <laughs> thank you so much, colleagues. Yes, uh, thank, you, thank you, team. Uh, DFFE, I see the DGCA. Keep on supporting whoever is going to replace me, DG. You have been amazing with the team. I must say that uh, the PLOs, everyone. Yeah, I hope you continue to do the same with whoever is going to replace me. It was a very wonderful experience working with all of you. I'm saying this because we won't be with you when we go to Oversight on Friday. Thank you so much. You have made it possible to execute our oversight responsibility. Yes, I must say I enjoyed working with all of you. When I came in, environment was something new to me, but I can tell you now I'm much more empowered. I'm even anticipating to take a career and do my PhD on the work that you do. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Too. Okay, the meeting gets adjourned. We'll meet on Friday. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye, Paulson. You are friends, the two of you. <laughs> but when you want to bring it we in. Tried. You know.